Welcome to Daily Evening Prayer with St. John's. My name is Deacon Greg, and I am happy to be with you this evening. This is um, Tuesday. I was going to say Wednesday. Tuesday, March 14th. And this is our opening scripture from 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O gladsome light, together. O gladsome light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. We'll be Sorry about that. We'll be in Psalm 35 this evening. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me, and fight against those who fight against me. Take up the shield and buckler and stand up to help me. Bring forth the spear and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion who imagine evil against me. Let them be as the chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord scatter them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For they have secretly laid their net to destroy me without a cause. Indeed, without a cause, they have made a pit to take away my life. Let sudden destruction come upon them unawares, and the net which they have laid secretly catch themselves, that they may fall into their own trouble. Then shall my soul be joyful in the Lord. I shall rejoice in his salvation." All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those who are too strong for them. Indeed, the poor and those who are in misery from those who rob them. Malicious witnesses rise up. They charge me with matters I know nothing about. They repay me evil for good to the great sorrow of my soul. Nevertheless, when they were sick, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. I prayed with my whole heart as if it had been my friend or my brother. I behaved myself as one who mourns for his mother. I was bowed down with heaviness of heart. But in my adversity they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Indeed, those who struck me came together against me, and I had no rest. They tore at me and would not cease. When I stumbled, they mocked me exceedingly and gnashed at me with their teeth. 
Lord, how long will you look on this? So deliver me from the calamities they bring upon me and my life from the lions. So will I give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among many peoples. O let not those who are my enemies triumph over me deceitfully. Neither let them wink with their eyes those who hate me without a cause. For their talking is not for peace, but they imagine deceitful words against those who are quiet in the land. They open their mouths at me and say, Aha! Aha! We saw it with our own eyes. This you have seen, O Lord. Hold not your tongue, then. Be not far from me, O Lord. Awake and stand up to judge my case. Avenge my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness, and let them not triumph over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Aha! We have what we want. Neither let them say, We have devoured him. Let them be put to confusion and shame who rejoice at my trouble. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who boast against me. Let them be glad and rejoice who favor my righteous cause. Indeed, let them say always, Great is the Lord who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And as for my tongue, it shall be talking of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. (laughs) Proverbs chapter 13. A wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. From the fruit of his mouth a man here eats what is good, but the desire of the treacherous is for violence. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. The righteous hates hates falsehood, but the wicked brings shame and disgrace. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless, but sin overthrows the wicked. One pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. The ransom of a man's life is his wealth, but a poor man hears no threat. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. By insolence comes nothing but strife, but but with those who take advice is wisdom. Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Whoever despises the word brings destruction on himself, but he who reveres the commandment will be rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, that one may turn away from the snares of death. Good sense wins favor, but the way of the treacherous is their ruin. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool flaunts his folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful envoy brings healing. Poverty and disgrace come to him who ignores instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is honored. A desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but to turn away from evil is an abomination to fools. Whoever walks in the wise, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Disaster pursues sinners, but the righteous are rewarded with good. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. The follow ground of the poor will yield much food, but it is swept away through injustice. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. The righteous has enough to satisfy his appetite, but the belly of the wicked suffers want. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him throughout all generations. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, has helped his servant Israel as he promised to our fathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Second reading is from Colossians chapter 2, starting in verse 20 through chapter 3, verse 11. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to things that all perish as they are used, according to human precepts and teachings. Those, these have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. 
If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the thing, minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of Simeon. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The second set of suffrages, that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace in your church and in the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord. That we, may be, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. The Collect from this last Sunday, the third Sunday of Lent. Heavenly Father, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Look with compassion upon the heartfelt desires of your servants, and purify our disordered affections, that we may behold your eternal glory in the face of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Call it for aid against peril on this Tuesday evening. Lighten our darkness, we beseech you, O Lord, and by your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayer for mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I invite you to offer up your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, we give you thanks for the announcement from our bishop um, and our diocese of the um, involvement and participation of Bishop Mark Zimmerman. Lord, thank you that he is coming to be our missionary bishop, uh, our suffragan bishop within our diocese, and is uh, helping us form the Yellowstone Missionary District. So, Lord, we give you thanks for answering our prayers. We give you thanks for seeing our need. 
We give you thanks for calling him as your servant to um, have this role of oversight in support of our bishop and in service for us. Uh, Lord, that you would um, guide and direct both Bishop Keith as well as Bishop Mark. Lord, that you would um, lead them in your truth, that you would lead them in your grace. Uh, Lord, thank you for them. Pray that you would bless them. Lord, and I pray for our, our missionary district that you would um, expand your kingdom in our midst. Lord, that your kingdom would come in this region, in this area, and uh, Lord, that your name would be honored in our midst. So Lord, we give you thanks for your provision, for your fatherly hand of goodness upon us. In Christ's name, amen. General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and love and kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thanks for joining me this evening. This evening. Glad to be with you. Hope you have a great one.